Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a thread question this time. I haven't done a thread in a long time. This one was kind of intriguing. It's that one that uh, Brian from Black Beans and Rice started. Uh, ten concerts you've seen. Show ten albums from, you know, ten concerts. Ah, however it goes. You know, you, you know, because everyone's done this thread. I actually haven't been to a ton of concerts. Uh, you know, when when someone asks $200 for a concert, I, I immediately start to figure, like, well, that's like 10 record albums. And I'll have those records forever. I know I'll have a memory from the concert, but I'm getting older. Will I really have a memory? It's kind of a crapshoot, you know what I mean? So let's begin. First concert. I want to talk, that's my very first one when I was really young. We went to see Victor Borg. My parents took me. They thought they thought he was hilarious, and I just didn't get the whole thing. So why, why are we listening to a guy playing on piano, and why is everyone laughing? I don't get it. But 1974, I was in high school marching band, Central City, Nebraska. Go Bison! And uh, we went to the State Fair. Every year went to the State Fair, and then you got to go to a concert. So I went to my very first concert, 1974. And who did they have playing but... Sha-na-na, sha-na-na-na, sha-na-na-na, boo-ba, sha-na-na-na, sha-na-na-na-na. And... It wasn't the greatest thing in the world to me. I... These guys are running around in orange suits. 50s music, you know, as a teenager in the 70s, 50s was like really old time music. Now, parents listen to that stuff. Why would I even be interested? I mean, they put on a nice show, a lot of skits. Bowser, you know, his low voice was there. They wound up getting a TV show and everything, but it just did. It was part of that 50s revival, happy days, hey. And so, but that's my very first concert. Sha na na. Darn exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, get ready for some more real excitement here. Okay, so you're saying to yourself, Steve, how can you top that? Well, 1975, I really worked hard on that. The, the marching band, Go Bison, went to the Nebraska State Fair again. And this year, the headline performer that we got to see Captain Antoniel, <laughs> how about that? Now, I knew who these guys were. They were on the radio. Eh, it was okay. Uh, just kind of exciting. You know, it, was, it was sure a lot better than Sha Na Na. Uh, and then people really didn't like them a lot, too. Schlocky or whatever. But they had love will keep us together going on. That was kind of happening. Uh, uh, yeah, I was in marching band. We liked that kind of stuff. It was all good. So... 1975 concert, yeah, Nebraska State Fair. I remember there's a t-shirt I wanted to buy. I thought it was just the funniest thing. It said, save a tree, eat a beaver. I later found out that was something sexual. No clue, no clue at that time. I just thought it was pretty funny about a beaver and that you should eat a beaver, like a real beaver. You get it, all right. Second concert, 1975. Third concert, 1976. I know what you're saying. What was playing at the Nebraska State Fair in 1976? Well, we wound up moving. We moved to Schuyler, Nebraska. Go Warriors! And they didn't go to the Nebraska State Fair. No, instead, we wound up going to Disney World. But I got together with some friends. Yes, I, I did make friends. And we went to a con I went to my first concert that I had to buy the tickets to. And we went and saw Kiss Destroyer. Here I heap open for them. I've told the story many times about the dope smoke that I was unfamiliar with, but it does cure migraine. Concert was incredible. Fire, blood, the whole works, the towers. It, it was just, it, it blew my mind. Greatest thing in the world. But what I really remember, a great memory of this concert, is afterwards we went out to eat, like at a big boy, that kind of thing. And there's like six of us there. And one by one, everyone decides we're going to sneak out. And last one sitting there is going to have to pay. Well, you know who was the last one sitting there. Yeah, you got it. So they're all going out and sneaking out. And you know what? I just go, oh. I grabbed my check, I walked up, I paid, and I walked out, 
And that was the end of it. Two of the other guys did go back in and pay. They felt so bad about not paying on that. But the other ones, they did skip out. They didn't hose me, though. I, I wasn't going to do that. No, sir. I, I just, I was one honest guy. But this concert, it, it really, that was my first. I know, Captain Chanel was pretty rocking. But this thing really, really rocked. Funny thing is, I never became a KISS fan. I I never bought, uh, I bought a Live 2. And really, that was it. I never bought anything else from KISS. I moved on into other things after that. But this was probably one of my all-time favorite concerts. Continuing my musical journey. 1977, I went concertless, but I started college. Nebraska Wesleyan University in Lincoln, Nebraska. Go Plainsman! And 1978, a uh, band came to town that I knew because I had bought their album 75 actually through Columbia Record Club and it was Jeff Tom. And they were coming to town promoting the Heavy Horses album. I went with someone, I, I can't even remember who I went to that concert with now. Actually, no, it was Doug Brown. And wow, what an incredible incredibly good concert. They had these gigantic balloons they were putting out. Ian Anderson was all over the stage. Uh, uh, it was just, it, it was so much fun. And it, it just sealed me as, as a lifelong Jethro Tall fan. Uh, it, nothing crazy happened at it. I, the only thing crazy is I had an incredibly good time. The music was wonderful. And I began learning more of the back catalog that, quite frankly, I wasn't that familiar with. I knew this album. I knew Songs from the Wood. I knew Minstrel in the Gallery. Uh, but then I got into the other stuff. I had this group. I saw them again. I believe it was in, yep, 1984. When they had this one came out, uh, Under Wraps concert. So I went to see that. And more, a little more synthesizer going on. And then I saw them in 1989 again. And that was when they did Rock Island. Uh, that was kind of, that was, it was just, it was fun to see them again. This one was, was, was a real rocking one. Under Wraps, a little more synthesizer. Got rid of all that, got into the rock, plus all their favorites. I mean, they had so many different ones. So it's one of the only groups I have seen three times. I would like to see them again, but, you know, maybe someday. Of course, <laughs> before everyone dies, I guess. So there we go. Uh, but I want to count that as one concert, one band. All right. All right. 1979. Another group came, another guy came that I was super excited about. I love this man. One of my all-time favorites, still is my all, one of my all-time favorites, Steve Martin. He was all over the place on TV, Saturday Night Live, different things. And he was coming to Lincoln. I, and I had some buddies that had already had tickets. And they go, man, you want to come? I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went to try to buy tickets. I couldn't get anything you know, buy them. It was all sold out. And then the lady goes, well, I have one ticket. It's in the sixth row. Would that be okay? Uh, so these guys are stuck in the back. I'm up in the sixth row. Me and Steve. It's me and Steve. We're together there. We were one. He came out. He had a little Instamatic camera. He's taking pictures of the audience. Arrow on the head. Balloons on this. Oh my God. It was so damn funny. Uh, Love that man. You know, he, the movie The Jerk came out. Cracked me up. Now, I've seen him. I've seen him with the Stone Canyon Rangers. They came to Midland. And I have seen him with Edie Brickell. And that was a few years back. So there's another artist I've seen three times in three different phases of his career. But that concert... It was just the greatest thing in the whole wide world. I was in seventh heaven. Here's my favorite comic, still one of my favorite comics of all time. Uh, and when he was in his prime, damn, he was funny. So, Steve Martin. Let's move to 1980. I'm still in college. Coming to Omaha, Nebraska. I had to drive up to Omaha to see them. Was Van Halen. I was not a huge Van Halen fan. My little brother was, though he didn't come with me because he wasn't going to spend the money. But I had some buddies going, and I, and I knew all their work because my little brother had all their albums, so I went up there. I will say this. David Lee Roth put on a great show. The man's a showman. You know, he's 
very, very smart, but very flexible and a real showman. And it was just, it was a lot of fun. There was a lot of entertainment in there. And then of course the power of, of the guitars. Well, I remember most though, the guy two seats over, as he's sitting there, all of a sudden he just threw up on himself and he sat in his puke for the whole show. Didn't, didn't phase him. It kind of bugged me a little bit, but after a while, you know, you just learn to not look over at a guy sitting in his own puke. <laughs> hey, it's a good show. He didn't do get up and stand for the encore. I think he's pretty zonked out, but uh, what wonderful show. Had a great time. I had never seen them in concert again, but it was fun to see them when they were young, when they were in their prime, when they had their hair, when they had their teeth, and when they were really enjoying themselves on stage. So Van Halen, 1980. All right, now we're going to go way into the future, all the way to 2011. When my boys were growing up, they never asked to go to a concert. They really never had any interest in music. That, that, that wasn't their thing. You know, my, my younger son likes some Christian rock. Actually, I did take him to see Blind Boys of Alabama, but by then he was in his 20s. When my younger son, Eric, uh, he had just graduated, or he was in college, I guess, getting, you know, but he was getting there toward graduation. And he was home at the summer, and I said, hey, you two's coming, would you like to go see them? And he goes, yeah, let's go do that. And uh, Florence and the Machine opened for them, but you two was there. And this is when they had this huge kind of egg in the middle, and it's just around the screen. I, it was just a gigantic, uh, stage there it is that's the picture that's my concert t-shirt it, it was so entertaining it was so energetic uh, you know bono is incredible i really like you too i've always liked you too uh, and and they, they they put on a really good show and my son he, he really liked it eric got into it and took his girlfriend to it and they of course she wanted to see Florence and the Machine which was fine she was good too but nothing like these guys and they were just it was excellent uh, and, and and you know they they, they they did their hits they, they were part of the audience the and, and the whole stage setting was incredible so it was a different album but it's I, I have it in CD so there we go. There's U2, a very young U2, but I saw a very old U2, uh, some guys that were in their 50s, just like me. In 2014, 2015, there was a twofer coming to Midland, Michigan. Uh, every June, we have a big kind of a celebration where they have a lot of music, a lot of entertainers, magicians, whatever, coming to town. Well, this year we had John Hyatt was coming along with Lyle Lovett. I really like both of these artists. You know, I've been buying Lyle Lovett for many, many years, along with John Hyatt. Uh, I, I, I know their back catalogs very, very well, so I was excited to go. So my wife came with, you know, I, she's not a music lover either, but she will do certain shows, she'll come with me. Uh, and we'll go out. And it was it was a really nice show. It was just Hyatt and Love It together. That was it. There was nobody else. They each had their acoustic guitars. They took turns playing their songs, and they would talk stories about it, and they would inter interact with each other. It was a really intimate evening. Uh, it was just it was so much fun to hear them talk music talk what does this song mean and then kind of rib each other as they went into their various hits you know my favorite love it is this one here it's actually him and his large band that was out running around again uh, I haven't seen it but I would love to see him with his large band because that was such a good album but John Hyatt Lyle Love It probably 2015 or something like that wonderful concert 2017 was a huge year for music. Huge! We had two Midland, Michigan, came. Jason Isbell. He had a smaller, but he had, I guess it was about a five, six piece band. Uh, intimate show. 
really, I mean, it was just, a, it was a lot of fun. Again, it was good to hear him. My wife came along, you know, support me and my habit. Uh, and it was just, it was fun to hear him. You know, not only did he play his own songs, but he went back and did some of the songs that he wrote uh, for drive-by truckers, like Decoration Day. And you now the crowds are all yelling, hey, play this, play that. He played the ones I wanted because me and him were were connected. I, I could feel that. I didn't get no guitar picks or nothing like that. Actually, I won't buy the seats right up front because they they just want too much money for it. Uh, but I bought a T-shirt. Isn't that that's that's important? Maybe something autographed also at the merchandise table. But that was a great concert. The other one, uh, they came to Saginaw, Michigan, in the fall of that year. And that was ZZ Top. They're a lot older, quite a bit older. If you sit further back, you can't even tell, you don't notice it. And it's a, one of those groups, I really like their 70s output. It's a, my favorite. And when they go back to more of their Texas blues style, wonderful concert. They brought out the fuzzy guitars. They spun the fuzzy guitars. And then it was, you know, my greatest hits package. They had a album. <laughs> it was a greatest hits album coming out. So, hey, you can't go wrong with that. But it was uh, really enjoyable to see them. And I'm really glad that I went and was able to watch because it, it is a group that I play their music quite often. So those are the concerts. You know, I've seen Chicago when they were old, I've seen Boston when they were old, I've seen REO when they were old, and some smaller things. But I, I just, I don't get to a lot of concerts, basically because I've never had any friends that are into music and say, hey, there's a concert, let's go. Uh, so, you know, it just, it would be more by myself, which isn't quite as much fun. You know, I saw Thomas Dolby by myself. I was on the road and I went, he was coming to town. I thought, well, I'll just go see him. If I was in Detroit more often on business, I would take in a lot more concerts, probably in some of the smaller settings. But those, those are 10 concerts and I have no idea how long this thing went, but I thought I would just share that and let you know all my great rock and roll stories of Sean on I. Captain Tanil. That's where it all began. Thanks everyone for watching.